Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to laser cut this Dungeons & Dragons modular board with walls. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And just recently I became interested in Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I joined a group, I'm learning how to play, and it's a lot of fun. And I decided to do what I always do for games I love, which is to make accessories to go with it. So I thought I'd start with the basics, which is a modular board and some walls. And then later I'll do some accessories to go with this. Uh, the design is all done in Adobe Illustrator. The parts are cut on a laser cutter. And the basic tile here is a two by two. The size is designed to fit these one inch base uh, characters. And one side I always did in a stone design. And then on the other side, I did this frame with a black background that allows me to drop in a variety of different things. So I can put a wood parquet pattern in it. And I can put, I cut two different kinds of acrylic. This orange fluorescent acrylic, which uh, to me represents lava or fire. And then I also did a blue acrylic, fluorescent acrylic, to represent water. Now these are the two by two tiles that you can drop in, but I've also in every case cut a one by twos or a bunch of one by twos and a bunch of one by ones. And that allows you then to drop in any pattern you want of stone, wood, and the two acrylics to represent a map. Now in addition to the tiles, I wanted to make some walls. And these drop into the holes that are along the edges of the tile. And I have two sizes of walls, this size, and a little bit shorter because that's what you need to make a corner. So the walls are all decorated with um, this really nice stone pattern that I did in embossing powders. It makes them actually look like sparkly stones. And I did that by cutting this uh, stamp on my laser cutter. And I use that to stamp the embossing ink and put the powder on. And I'll show that process in this video. So I'll, I'll talk about how I did all of this in this episode. I always begin my design process by seeing what other people are doing. And I decided based on that to use one and a quarter inch squares so there were room for the walls and also to not use clips so that it was easier to move the tile around and to assemble and disassemble them quickly. I also look for visual references for the different graphic components. So black and white images like this for the wood or this for the stone are very easy to use. You just pull them into Illustrator and run an image trace on them. But some images require more work. So this one that I wanted to use for the liquids, I first pulled it into Photoshop. I made it kind of square. And then after I image traced it, I cleaned out a lot of the interior lines to make it simpler. The stone pattern was even harder. This is the best I could find. It's flagstone, so I pulled one stone out, this one here. And in Photoshop, I both made it more square, and I increased the contrast between the light and the dark. And then I pulled that into Illustrator and did an image trace. The result of all that was these vector drawings. That was the wood. This is the liquid pattern that I'm going to use. And this is what I finished up with for the stone pattern. In my designs, the blue lines are engraving lines and the red lines are cut lines. So that's the top of a basic tile. This is the middle, and I wanted it to be a heftier tile, so I did include a middle. And for the other side, I cut both the parquet inlay and the frame in one piece. Very efficient use of wood. These are the basic acrylic pieces I'll cut out of both colors of acrylic, the 2x2s, the 1x2s, and the 1x1s. And I'm cutting 2x1s and 1x1s for the wood and the stone as well. I do a layout drawing for the walls because this is a little more complicated. So this is an example of what one of the tile pieces look like, and the green represents the top-down view of the walls. And I do this so that I can make sure that everything's going to fit the way I expect it to. And I pull one of those top-down views over and I use it to actually design the wall itself. So corner walls and full walls and facades to go on both sides. And this is what the final pieces look like. 
The stamp is a little different because black here represents an actual image. I leave it as an image and I'm going to raster engrave that onto the stamp and then cut it out. I also need to cut wood to go on the back of the stamp. The last step is to lay out the actual cut sheets that will fit on the 12 inch by 12 inch materials I'm using. My first wall design was only one layer of wood and it had a bar on the bottom that fit in the middle that helped it stand up. But I found this was too difficult to insert. Here I am testing it right at the maker space to see what I think and uh, eventually I had to go back and redesign that. Luckily I only had to recut the middle sections, everything else I cut in my first session still worked. Each 12 by 12 inch sheet took about 10 to 13 minutes to cut. So here I am, this is the raster engraving of the stamp, see how it looks like a printing head going back and forth. But then I switch over here to vector cutting to do the outline of the stamp and this is what it looks like when it's cleaned up. The paper protecting the back of the acrylic is hard to remove. So I soak the pieces overnight in simple green and then I use these tools to recover the simple green. I use it over and over again. I rinse stuff off and then I use the wooden chopsticks to help remove the paper. Then I soak it again in a water bath to help remove the simple green smell and finally I dry it on paper towels. If you've seen me make tokens with a fluorescent acrylic you know that the engraving shows up best on a dark surface. I mix black and white acrylic paint to make gray and then add this glazing fluid to make it thin enough so that when I paint it on the stone tile that all the engraving will show through. You don't want to go through all that work and then cover it up with a solid acrylic paint. The parquet wood looks great just left unpainted. I paint one side of the middle layer black and then I glue on the frames making sure that those wall grooves are clear of glue. And then when that's dry I glue the stone on the other side and that's a finished tile. If you've never done embossing, this will be a lot of fun. You get a stamp pad for embossing that's just clear, slow drying ink. And you ink up your stamp, you stamp it on, the, in this case, the wall, one of the facade pieces. I put it in the little tray. I sprinkle the mixture of embossing powder on it, and that's a mixture of like three or four different colors that I've put together. You recover the leftover powder, and then you put the wall on a heat safe surface and you get out your heat gun and you start to heat it from one end to the next. Now I'm going to speed this up because it takes a minute or so for it to get going but once it starts you can see as the powder which is a special kind of acrylic that melts under a heat gun temperature is going to melt and fuse across the surface. I worked on six wall sections at a time and I really love the way this turned out. You keep that granularity and it's much more interesting than just paint. When I assemble the walls I do one side uh, for all of them at once, let them dry, flip it over, do the other side. As you can hear the tiles are really quite substantial. My plan is to create a special neoprene play mat for using these. The frame system gives a lot of flexibility. I think I'm going to be able to recreate a lot of different maps using fewer tiles. The walls are meant to be internal walls. I don't feel you need walls at the edge of a map. And so these sticks go down into the holes between tiles. They fit in pretty well, uh, but once again I think the mat's important because these slip on a slippery surface but they're heavy enough that when they're on a neoprene mat I think they'll be quite stable. I'm happy with the final result. I mean we all have different aesthetics that we like but I like this uh, pretty clean modern look even if it is for Dungeons and Dragons. In my next video I'm going to make some accessories for this board. If you're interested please subscribe to my channel.